today we're traveling back to the early days of YouTube. Well, there was one founding YouTuber, Mr. Anime, who first made a name for himself in reviewing anime. But over time, his videos started to get really demented. He would film all of these strange skits and was super into violence and gore. But one day, Mr. Anime just popped off. He rubbed out his entire family and planned to do much worse after that. And while it took three people to pass away before the guy was arrested, looking back at his videos, the whole thing was pretty much foreshadowed on the internet. On the morning of March 20th, 2012, a 57-year-old Texas woman named Rhonda Sessler was called to the garage by her son, Trey. Trey was an avid YouTuber, and Rhonda had helped him out in the past with some of his videos and skits, so she walked in thinking that's what he called her for. But much to her surprise, Trey had a rifle and fired four rounds at her in point-blank range. After Rhonda was down, I guess Trey felt the need to go after more victims, so he walked into the house and sent a bullet to his brother, Mark. Trey's dad, who was asleep in the bedroom, heard the commotion, and by the time he could come out and figure out what was going on, it was too late. A bullet was already coming his way too. Now, Mark actually survived the first hit, so he was able to crawl to the bathroom where he locked the door and hid. But as much as Mark may have tried to hatch an escape plan, Trey retraced his steps to make sure all of his family members were gone. And when he realized his brother was hiding in the bathroom, he beat down the door and finished him off. And after Trey had knocked down his whole family, he completely wrecked their house, throwing things around and carving a bunch of odd phrases on walls and doors, such as, I love my family, and I will never forgive myself. I don't know why I did this. But Trey's rampage wasn't supposed to end there. Trey grabbed more weapons, 100 rounds of ammunition, and headed for Waller High School, his alma mater. Apparently the dude was hoping to bust into a pep rally and rub out at least 70 kids using his semi-automatic rifle, but somewhere along the way, he decided he wasn't ready. And thankfully, before he could take out anyone else that day, Trey was arrested for slaying his parents and brother. The three victims had been found in the early afternoon, and it didn't take long for officials to clock Trey for the crime. By the time the boy was cuffed, officials had already found several weapons on him, so it was clear he was up to no good. As the detectives started talking to Trey, they learned that he was planning to interrupt the pep rally with bullets in the style of the Columbine executioners. Trey told officials that the main reason he snuffed his family was because he didn't want them to be ashamed of what he was about to do. When this all went down, he was still living in his parents' home in Waller, Texas. He was 22 years old, so he had already graduated high school and did a little bit of community college, but he was definitely in the thick of the I graduated high school but don't know what I want to do with my life phase. So Trey was a hardcore YouTuber, and he got in before the whole platform blew up, so he was like one of the OG creators. His YouTube channel was called Lens Cap Productions, and he went by the name Mr. Anime. Over the course of about five years, Trey uploaded 323 videos, most of which were clips of him reviewing anime. One of the reasons he was so popular was because he was brutally honest. And while Trey got his claim to fame in the anime world, over time, his straightforward videos started to shift into much more. In between his reviews, Trey would upload short films that he'd convince his mom and brother to be in. But Trey was also a huge fan of firearms, and he started to get really into posting videos of him firing his weapons and setting up makeshift ranges around town to practice his craft. He'd also just fire bullets in random buildings too. And that's when Trey just started to spiral. His videos completely lost their charm, but people continued to watch them. And as much as everyone wanted to look away, Trey's videos were so awkward and tragic that people couldn't help but watch. Around that time, Trey started taking antidepressants, and he was already into booze, so it was just an awful combination. In addition to his violent and demented videos, Trey began dabbling in arson and animal torturing. And he's showing all of the typical signs of being an executioner. Which makes me wonder if anyone ever thought to step in. He didn't get much human interaction aside from the little moments he'd share with his brother or mom or dad. But Trey liked being a homebody. 
In one of his videos, Trey compared himself to a NEET, which is a derogatory Japanese term that stands for not in education, employment, or training. Basically, it's a label used for people who are out of school and unemployed. And although Trey fit the bill, he said he didn't consider himself a NEET and believed it was all propaganda. But this was a big point of tension within his family. Trey's dad didn't really want anything to do with his son due to his lack of ambition and success. So all of the pressure Trey was getting from his unsupportive father could have been a factor that led him to such a dark place. Over the span of his uploads, you can basically see Trey deteriorate in front of your eyes. And Trey's viewers didn't know what was going on in his life behind the scenes, but there were a few instances where it was clear that Mr. Anime had gone off the deep end. Trey published a video in 2011 where he had a big gash on his face and didn't explain what happened. He said because of legal and insurance purposes, I cannot disclose what the accident was, but I will not be able to appear on camera for a while. That same year, Trey shared in a video that he had been diagnosed with pneumothorax, which is a fancy way of saying his lung was on the verge of collapsing. He told his fans that he was suffering from shortness of breath, back pain, and lack of sleep. He said, if you're religious, I'd appreciate it if you prayed for me and keep watching my channel. Well, after Trey's dramatic revelation, it actually turned out that he had one of the most mild cases of pneumothorax ever, so he was back in action in no time. In February of 2012, Trey uploaded a video with the title, Mr. Anime is Planning Something. In the video, Trey told his fans that he'd be taking a short break and said he had something big in the works. But of course, he didn't go into detail about what it was. And in classic YouTuber fashion, Trey actually ended up posting two more videos before signing off. His final video was uploaded on March 13th, 2012, with the title, Mr. Anime's New Job. Trey told his fans that he found a full-time job, and he didn't exactly say what it was. He just said, it was in a department that I'm interested in, which is film. But his slaying spree was methodically thought out. After Trey was arrested, investigators searched through his computer files and journal entries to try and figure out what led him to do such an awful thing. In their search, officials concluded that Trey had been planning this act for a very long time. He had been researching things like true crime and mass executioners and had been stockpiling more and more weapons. Anyway, Trey started to disassociate himself from the world and became so obsessed with these famous criminals that he wanted to become one himself and decided he wanted to perform the largest school slaying spree in history so that he'd forever be remembered. After practicing his marksmanship on stray cats and dogs in the middle of the night, Trey was ready for the big event. On the night of March 19th, he boozed up and got ready for his villainous rampage. But as we learned earlier, even though he took out his whole family, he couldn't commit to the grand finale. The most ironic part about all of this is in one of his earlier videos, Trey addressed the amount of max executions happening in America and seemed to be very shaken up by it all. He said, I'm a firearms owner myself, but it is a little bit disturbing to know that you could be a victim in something like this at these times. All of the people that were victims think it won't happen to me, but sometimes it does. And sometimes it seems like people completely change their opinion and pop off on their family. Once Trey was in police custody, he was interrogated about the crimes. He admitted to taking out his parents and said the reason he didn't go into the school with his weapon that day was because it was all becoming too real. In August of 2012, Trey pleaded guilty and was sentenced to life in prison. He requested that his parole rights be taken away because he thought he might be a danger to himself or others if he ever got out. In an interview with the press, Trey said he was happy he was in prison because he knew he belonged behind bars for what he did. Since his arrest, there have been some rumors that Trey has actually passed away in prison, but none of them have been confirmed by authorities. See you next time.